May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I think there are probably many things for each of us that if we had been told that these were going to be the things that turned out to be true about ourselves and our lives, um, we probably wouldn't have believed them, say, if they were told us when we were young. And in my case, um, maybe not even listened to. Things that are positive and negative, things that may have been preferences and non-preferences. But as it turns out, um, it really is the case that I prefer riding tractors and motorcycles to almost anything that I could do or drive. And it's also true that at some point in my life, at one point, for a pretty long period actually, motorcycles were my main means of transportation. So I imagine now that there's something that has shifted for many of you in your perception of your deacon. <laughs> in that era, one night, very late at night, I was riding my motorcycle home from work. My job was in the Inner Harbor in Baltimore City. I was enjoying the relative quietude of the expressway when suddenly a loud clap sounded from under my motorcycle. I quickly shifted into neutral and pulled over onto the inadequately sized emergency lane. Kneeling down next to my motorcycle, I discovered that my chain was missing. I looked back and saw it lying on the road. There were no cars, so I ran to collect the chain and looking around, there were no pieces of it lying on the road. So I gathered it up and returned to my motorcycle. No sooner than I began to wonder how I was going to affect the necessary repairs, did I hear the roar of several motorcycles coming up the road. And as they go by at great speed, I notice they are all wearing vests and jackets with the same insignia. And they speed around the sweeping curve up ahead and out of sight. But the roar of their motorcycles did not diminish. In fact, the sound began to get louder. And they reappeared, coming back down the wrong side of the divided highway back towards me. There were about 10 of them. And as they approached, I could see they were all black men. And to be completely honest with you, I have to confess that a most varied and complex array of emotions and thoughts were rifling through me in that moment. They all pull over surrounding me and my bike. Having trouble? One of them asks. My, 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 my chain is broken. We can help with that. It is then that I notice that half of the men still sitting on their bikes are arranged in formation in the lane of traffic nearest to all of us, guarding me, my bike, and the men working to restore my bike. In the blink of an eye, the chain is repaired. Where are you headed? The intersection of York and Bologna, Govins. Half of the men mount their motorcycles and move off slowly, heading north. The other half nod to me, 
to move onto the expressway, and they move out of their formation and follow behind me. Occasionally, one of them pulls up next to me to make sure my bike is still good. They escorted me all the way home, all 10 of them. I ran into my apartment, came back out with what I had to thank them. We talked for a few minutes, and then they departed. Of course, I didn't recognize the entire magnitude of what had just happened to me. I don't think many of us do when we encounter that than which nothing greater can be conceived. In my mind, there is no other way to see this sort of generosity and care. I had been taken under wing, restored, protected, and brought home. A new scale had been set for what we all owe each other, for the way we all belong to a higher order. Truly, these men had restored, supported, strengthened, and established me I was met at the level of my need. They had stepped beyond the law to extend mercy. In an entirely Christ-like fashion, they had ignored the limits of social boundaries that might have separated us. Sure, they helped me because we were all motorcyclists, but the full measure of their assistance and security went well beyond making my motorcycle roadworthy. They set aside what they were doing, all 10 of them, as a unit, and folded me into their collected power. When we recognize clearly the degree of our utter dependence on grace, mercy, forgiveness, and all that intervenes on our behalf, to preserve and protect us, we then can begin to practice humility. This prepares us to be joined, owned, or one, as Julian of Norwich would say, with each other and our God. Hear from Peter. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him firm in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. This is what our prayers are for. This is what our baptism is for. This is what the Eucharist is for. To shape and elicit the actions of Christ in us so that we engage in the fullest measure of mercy and new life, that our lives could arrive at that cruciform intersection where divinity and humanity are met. Also, one more thing, join a gang. <laughs> Pray that you will be or already are found by one like the one that found me. Just join up in all the ways you can, a herd, a flock, a pack, a gang. We are all much better off when we do.